So if you've been following along with this free CAD mini series on the Curse Workbench, you would notice there's a number of ways to create surfaces. Now all those surfaces can be used in multiple ways and for multiple applications. The next surface I'm going to teach you is very good for tracing 3D objects if you have pictures or illustrations from a number of sides of that object. So if you have a front, back and top, you can use this tool to trace that object and create a surface between them. Now the tool has another tool that's often used with it. The tools we're going to be talking about are the create a surface that skins a network of curves and also the freehand bead spline. These two tools work very efficiently together. We're going to first go through a very simple example of using this tool. It's also called a Gordon surface. Right surface, you see it's saying Gordon surface there. Basically what it is, is a number of bead splines that create a surface that touch each other. They have to touch each of these bead splines and then you can create a surface over the top of them. To use this tool, it's quite simple. I'm going to be using both a bead spline and a sketch, a number of sketch items in there to first use this. Later on in other tutorials, I'll be just using the bead spline tool. So I'm going to go into the sketcher and I'm going to create a number of bead splines in here. And these are going to create our surface. So I'm going to go a new sketch in here and I'm going to go along the XY plane. That's absolutely fine. And we're going to use the B spline. And I'm just going to create a simple B spline. And hit escape. Close that. And click so we haven't got anything selected. Create a new sketch. Export a plane. And we're going to create another one. So these act as basically like rails. Create another one, XY plane. And I'm going to go for four of these. One more. And close that. So we've got four B splines. They're laid on top of each other. I space them out. The first sketch, leave it where it is. The second sketch, I'm going to move. And we're going to move that along. Let's click top and bring this around. So we're going to move it along the Z axis. So placement, position, along the Z. Let's bring that up. Now we're going to bring that up about 20. Next one, position, actually 40 millimeters. And the next one, 60 millimeters. We've got those there. We're going to create some ribs across here. The easiest way is to go to the Curves Workbench. And I'm going to create a rib that joins all of these together. So I'm going to go across and that will join those. So we're making a cross hatch system with these. To do this, I'm going to be using this tool here. You can see there's a number of options there, but we're not going to be using those options just yet. We're probably going to be using the snap points. That's the most we're going to be used for this demonstration. So I'm going to highlight all these sketches and I'm going to come into the view and I'm going to bring up the point size so we can see those endpoints. We've got point color, point size. At the moment it's four. Let's bring this up a bit. You can see they've all increased. I'm going to click, hold down control, and select all of those points there. Notice I've selected from top to bottom. That's because when I click the freehand B spline now, that will connect up those points with a B spline. And we're going to do the same over here. If I click these out of order, I'll show you this. If I clicked this one, Control click this one and then came out over here and then back again then the B spline will zigzag between those that's not what we want so you can see that's that's happened there so I'm going to get rid of that B spline now I'm going to have to double click it first because it's in edit mode get rid of it hit delete 
So these will go in edit mode when I place it across here. So click, control click, and then click the freehand B spline. You can see that's got tick by the side of it. And you can see there's a line that's been highlighted there and there is control points underneath these points here that you can move, but we're not worried about that. If you see this, just double click this beast spine for the time being. What I want to do now is create a number of beast spines across these. So I'm going to pick a point along these. So I'm going to say I want one here. So we click that beast spine, click where we want to go, click and click and use the tool again. And you see that puts them across there. It's in edit mode again. So that means if I highlight that point there, see it's highlighted in yellow, I can move that up and down. And I can adjust where that's going. I double click that, that's out of edit mode. Double click again, that's in edit mode. I will be going into this in more depth in another video. So those are there. And we're going to do the same over here. So click, control click, 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 and add that one. Double click to set. It's out of edit mode. And we're going to do one more over here. Click, and control click in all these lines, and then add in the B spline. It's in edit mode, double click it. So if we rotate this, we can see what's happened. Those B splines have joined up those lines. And that becomes a valid mesh for Gordon surface. To add the surface, it's quite easy. You click B splines from the screen. So one, control click next, 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 in the order that you want them created. So those are the ribs selected. Then we're going to select these rails that are going along here. Holding down control. So we've selected everything. And then we click on the create a surface that skins the network of curves. That will process. And our curve is now created. And you can click on the golden surface and come down to data. You can see this output, you can have it a wireframe if you want, so it's taking out less processor memory. You can see that wireframe there, and you can get a good look of what's happened with that surface. You've got a number of UV samples there, samples U, so you can stick that up to 20. That will reprocess, and you notice we get more along the U, and say 30 along the V. So you can see you've got 30 going this way, and 20 going this way, the U and the V to being placed along there. So with that, you can make it solid if you so desire. So you can come over to the part, and we can do a 3D offset against there. And let me come in, have a look at that Gordon surface at the moment. It's not a surface, so that's cancel that offset and come in and have a look down here at the moment output is wireframes made a surface and do a 3d offset against there and you can see the offset has taken so let's put two millimeters away there you go and fill offset So now we have a solid there that we can use. That's the basics of the Gordon surface. But it's a very powerful surface. We can do a lot with this. It's fully parametric. Come in, we can change these if we so desire. So I'm going to hide that Gordon surface, and hide the offset. And I'm going to come into one of these B splines. Let's come into this one here. Where is that? That's on the end. So let's double click that. 
you can see it's processing that. That's because I've just edited something. No, I didn't move it, edit it. So I can move this, for instance, this way. And this one, this way. And bring that back. I haven't double clicked it yet. I'm just going to output this as a wireframe so we can see what's going on. Let's double click that surface, that B spline there. Double click that to let that apply. And that has changed that surface. You can see there's a change in that surface. If I take one of these B splines, my offset has gone into error because I've changed this to wireframe. So we don't have to worry about that just yet. If I change one on these B splines in here, let's say that's change this sketch here. Let's double click on that sketch and just change that. Bring that right up. Close that. That's applying. And you can see that surface has moved up now. And if I change this to surface, then our offset should come out of error. There we go, the offset's come out of error, and that FET has been applied. There we go, there's the offset back. For well, a practical demonstration of how to use this tool, I've linked in a video from my channel, and that's how to create a simple car body from a number of images, including the front, side, and top view, and tracing freehand curves through that to create the Gordon surface. We'll then use the part workbench to boolean out parts of that car to make space for the wheels, windows, etc. This leaves us with a parametric surface that we can edit by just moving those B-splines, allowing us to affect the Gordon surface and to change its shape. In our next video, we'll be looking at ISO curves, and this allows us to take a network of curves and extract that from a shape. So that will allow you to sketch directly onto that surface and to create the features and parts you want. In the demonstration, we'll be using a car surface and we're going to be extracting our parts from that car surface. So that'll be up on my channel next week. And I hope to see you soon. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to my site. And also I have a Ko-Fi site where you can actually donate a few pence or a few pounds, dollars, or whatever your currency is. And that's at ko-fi.com slash M-A-N-G zero. And there you'll be able to help me fund my site and all the money that I actually get from any funds will actually get pushed back into the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing. I'll see you next time.